All right, this might be brilliant or stupid. Hey, YouTube world. So, <sighs> my generator's died again. Um, I've cleaned it a couple times, taken it apart, just in the car, taken out the brushes, just cleaned up everything. It lasted about a week and then it died again. So I just brushed it out again. It lasted about three days and that's it. So I've got a, uh, an alternator kit that I'm going to put in here. And it's been said that you can pull all this out and get that out actually by, by uh, uh, not taking the engine out of the car, um, by taking off the, the stand and the, the fuel pump and the, the uh, carburetor. And I've even seen where, you know, maybe you can reach back in here and get the, get the nut off the back of the fan. That might be a possibility. I might explore that, but I know I can pull this engine in 30 minutes and I can put it in in about 20. Um, so I might just pull it. I might just do that. My buddy Clint's going to come over and we're going to work on this together. And I think I'll set up the camera and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But uh, uh, we'll see what happens here. Um, we're going to look at it and see what we think we can do. But thanks for joining me today, and uh, we'll uh, we'll put an alternator in a '71 Beetle. See how that goes. All right. So looking at this, the temptation was to just take the nut off the back of the fan behind the generator. I've got a 36 millimeter uh, socket. I can just get back here. I could get a get a socket driver back there, but. Some of the other stuff's hard to get to. I know I can't get that intake manifold out um, properly to get to the bottom two screws on the uh, bottom of the, the plate there. Um, so I think it's just easier to pull the engine out. So my method is I jack this thing up and just get it on jack stands. Just, just the wheels off the ground is all I need. And I've got my other Jackson over here and then the jack I'll grab where is it there it is that spare and put it on top of the jack so when it comes to lifting up the car it can lift up the whole car you saw that in another video but first thing to do take everything off there so we're working on that by the way this is Clint I am. <laughs> and Clint lives here in Raton uh, there's, I think, what, six of us that drive Beals around periodically? Yeah. And so uh, we've been trying to kind of put together a little clubby-like thing, uh, just the six of us, and uh, work on our cars together. So Clint's going to help me out and uh, get the engine out of the Beetle. And uh, I timed myself the last time. Maybe I'll put the time lapse in here, like at 30 times speed or something. It took me 34 minutes from starting with the jacks and everything. To get it out so we could get we could have it out here pretty quick um so i'll show you the next step here too but we'll we're gonna pull all the wires and uh everything off the top that we need to get first so where are we at here well where we're at <laughs> Is we got the engine out. Maybe this one handed. This is a test. And I actually have this all together. So why? Why didn't I show you any of this happening? I'm not sure if I want to do videos anymore. I kind of get to working and, and I forget that I was going to make a a video for you guys but I think I do so let me show you it, it's not really that hard we pulled off the uh, the air shroud sorry and uh, that entailed you know pulling out the thermostat which I still have on this car disconnecting that <coughs> undoing the uh, fan shroud connectors there. I had to take off the linkage for the heater flaps 
on this one. That was pretty easy. Um, didn't pull out the carburetor, but we did replace the uh, fuel pump because I had one for an alternator style. Uh, my carburetor just clears the alternator here, which is fine. I think I think the injector pump clears. Um, no, it doesn't. I gotta buy more parts. I've gotta buy the little stand uh, for my carburetor. Well, that's good to know. So I won't be driving this to lunch today uh, because my carburetor does not clear. Um, it does though. I have one. I've got an offset. Uh, I just need to put it on. So anyway, let me show you the rest of this. Ignore the snowmobiles. Um, here's the old generator and the old fan bits. And I actually was missing a bit, it turns out, on here. Uh, unless it's not on here for the, the car. But there's a backing plate, which on the one for the alternator has a little hole in it. There's a reinforcing ring that goes on here. And then this plate actually goes that way. There we go. Uh, on the carb, on, on, the, on the alternator one. So, regardless, there we go. I think I was missing a little plate in there on my alternate, on my uh, generator. Jeez, keep saying carburetor. Anyway, so that that's all set. And you know, really, I watched the J Bugs video like three times to make sure that I was getting this on right. And I was, and it was all good. I'm going to put that spacer in there. I'll grab that and put that on because we're not going anywhere with that much travel in the uh, yeah <coughs> in there. So we'll put that on. Um, but that's one thing they tell you. Uh, they don't tell you in these videos and I'm going to tell you. You might need a spacer or an offset for your carburetor. And I do, I happen to have one. So we're gonna stick that in. Also, we got in the, this side of the pulley. And, oh, you gotta get this guy on here too. Um, and that works just fine. Um, but my pulley from a generator, it looks like it will work just fine until we actually put the belt and everything else on there, tighten it up and you can see where it was hitting the alternator so you might have an old style this evidently is a real old generator pulley off an older car the newer ones you know are about half this thickness or maybe two-thirds this thickness um, Clint has one of those he's bringing it by so we'll put that on but uh, let me put this spacer on here so my carburetor actually works and uh, I'll bring you back oh the other thing I had to do was the uh, alternator stand here, came with the kit. The kit says everything you need. It's not everything you need. You might need a new pulley. You might need a spacer here. I had to order a different uh, oil filler tube with this, this down. I always wanted this anyway. I didn't have one on mine and I had a hole down there uh, that, that I wanted to fill. So, um, you know, I put that on. Well, I, this is Chinese. This is empty, which probably is Chinese. And I had to get a new nut and a gasket for this. I couldn't get it on there after getting this in the hole. Um, it, it, it didn't fit right. So kind of had to take the, the nuts off of this, lift this up, get this screwed and stuck together and everything, then get this back down on here and then tighten this up. And it actually had to bend this. You can see it had to bend this a little bit to actually fit on there right because it, it it didn't it wasn't exact so there's some fiddling you have to do with all of this it seems um, yeah and I didn't show that in a video I'm sorry remember though when you're changing out your your um, fuel pump 
uh, if you go from generator to alternator style fuel pump, you also have to re replace your rod. The rod is shorter because this is tilted and the, uh, the little dingleberry that goes up and down to drive the pump is uh, in, the, in the block a little bit more. So you've got to change that out. I had gaskets and all this stuff laying around from other projects and, and things around here. So, um, but you might have to change all of this stuff. Uh, and you'd have to like, do some fitting and fiddling. Um, it took me a while to get the fan shroud back on, uh, to get my flaps back here to actually, where are you? Actually, to actually work right. These guys, um, they didn't work exactly right again. So I had to fiddle with that, make sure I, I, I got it right and make sure everything was loose. So you're gonna have to fiddle with stuff and work on it to make it, to make it fit. It just takes a little while, so. Um, be prepared for that. Um, it's been about three hours. You know, the video, I think the J-Bugs video is like eight minutes long. <laughs> it really, it took about three hours of fiddling to get all this, this stuff together and, and fit on here right. So, and as you see, it's, it's still not exactly right. So the next thing we're going to do, or I'm going to do, is looking at instructions here, you have to... Uh, do some of the wiring underneath the seat. I'll bring you back. I'll pull that out and, and show you But I actually got The connectors for those those don't come with a clip clip either the cl kit Jeez, you need a, a, a Y connector here and you need a straight through connector here I actually had some Y's and heavy straight through so I had to wait for those um, So that'll all be neat be together here. It shows you where in here doesn't show you anywhere <laughs> where you got to do that um, somewhere in here yeah it doesn't really show you I'll show you that underneath the, the back what we've got to do underneath there but it doesn't say um, you know in here where you might need a new pulley that I could see so uh, we'll get all this stuff on and we'll bring it back so basically inside here where's my regular regulator is you have to connect this blue wire and green wire together I'll put the ground back for this brown wire and then all three red wires go together that's pretty much it um, this one of course has I think way too big uh, uh, there we go a connector on it so I've got to replace that with a quarter inch that one too might have to go buy those. Got to put a quarter inch on this one. Uh, the the green and blue already have quarter inch connectors, so that's pretty easy. And I just need a screwdriver to take the uh, regulator off and uh, just wire this all up. So we'll do that at least. Uh, I looked around. I have a 31 to 34 spacer. I don't have a 34 to 34. I'm going to think about um, taking a file to the case on that alternator and just making some room for the little lever uh, to, to turn. We'll see. I'll try that out. Okay, so we've taken out the voltage regulator and like I said, we've connected the blue and green wire together. Didn't have to do anything to them, just put them through a single connector like that. And then the three red wires, I had to take off the original terminals because they're they're large. They're uh, bigger than a quarter inch, um, and put quarter inch terminals on there, and then put them through a Y connector like that. And that's all you have to do inside because the um, focus because the uh, alternator is internally regulated, and so it'll take care of all the regulation. This just goes to the battery, to the alternator, and then to something else. Where does that go? I think that goes up to the starter. Um, so we're all set. That's it on that end. And we'll go back to the engine and show you what I have to do there. All right, this might be brilliant or stupid, but this is about the space I need on the side of the alternator here. And I've got my Dremel with a little thing grinder thing I found on there. I've got some other stuff if this doesn't grind it, but I just want to make a, a little recess in there 
uh, for the carburetor stuff to go through. I might double gasket this also. I don't know if they'll do anything. Probably have to end up buying a spacer, but I'm gonna try this. Um, I know, it's a brand new alternator. I'm gonna grind the case away. What could go wrong? Nope, that's not gonna do it. It's still gonna hit. Gotta order a spacer. All right, this is why Volkswagen guys have 50 cars in their yard. <laughs> because I found another carburetor that had the setup for an alternator on the accelerator pump. Took that off, put it on my rebuilt original Solex, and uh, we get full travel now. So we will be putting the engine back in the Beetle and driving to lunch.